exercise tutorial where we apply a little bit of the physics that we've learnt using maths as a modelling system. So again, how this tutorial operates is four simple steps. You play the video and I pose or ask a question, then you need to pause the video and have a go at the exercise. Then continue the video and I'll give you a hint to help if you haven't already been able to do the exercise. Then next step, step three, continue to play and I will give you the answer. But more than that, I'll show you how we got to that answer. Then step four, continue the video to the next question. So let's get underway. Question one, what is the capacitance in microfarads of a capacitor which stores a charge of 0.00034 coulomb when supplied from a six volt battery. So pause your video here. Okay, here's the hint. The formula is Q for coulomb equals C capacitance times voltage. So pause again if you didn't know that. So in this particular case, we need to transpose that equation. So uh, Q equals C times V gives us a transposed equation of C equals Q divided by V. So we simply take 0.0034, we divide it by our six volts, and you'll get an answer of 0 0.566 microfarads. Microfarads. Our next question is question two. A capacitor is rated at 40 microfarads and the supply stores a charge of 0.005 coulomb. This time we need to determine the voltage. So again, think about the previous question and transposing the equation. So pause here. Here's your hint. Q equals C times V again. This time we transpose the equation and we make V the subject of the formula. So V equals Q divided by C. So we take our Q at 0 0.005 coulomb divided by 40 times 10 to the minus 6 that gets us into our farads and you'll find it comes to 125 volts. You should have got 125 volts. Q3, question three. A capacitor rated at 30 microfarads and the supply by a voltage of 100 volts, calculate the charge. So pause here. Here's your hint, same one again, Q equals C times V. Of course, this time you won't need to transpose it. And here's the answer, Q equals C, C times V. So 100 volts multiplied by a capacitance of uh, 30 times 10 to the minus six microfarads gives us 0 0.003 coulomb. Question four, a circuit has a 20K ohm resistor and a 6.8 microfarad capacitor in series across 200 volts DC. Determine the time constant and the current after five time constants. So we should uh, draw the circuit and label it and use your time constant curves. So in this particular case, the time constant is 
20k multiplied by 6.8 times 10 to the minus 6. Our time constant is 0.13 seconds. So at five time constants, there will be only 7%. So we're going to multiply by 0.7. So full current is volts divided by R. So we find out what our full current is. And we find that the full current is 0.01 amps. So we take our 0.01, we multiply by 0.007. And we end up with 70 microamps after five time constants. Remember, in this particular case, we we're going down, where the current is going down. Question 5. For the circuit below, determine the time constant and approximate time taken for the capacitor voltage to equal the supply voltage. So pause here. So hint, draw the circle, label it, use your time constant curves again. So the time constant is 50k times 1 times 10 to the 6. We had 1 microfarad. The time constant was 0.5. And the supply voltage will equal the voltage across the capacitor will equal the supply voltage at, we say five time constants. I mean, it's either five or it's six, but virtually we just say it's five time constants. It's within a hair's breadth at five time constants, and it gets there somewhere between five and six. So we like to say five time constants. I'd happily accept six as well. So either 2.5 seconds or three seconds would also be an acceptable answer. Question six, two capacitors are connected in series, eight microfarads and 12 microfarads, and they're connected to a 240 volt supply. Determine the total capacitance, the voltage across each capacitor and the charge in each capacitor. So pause here. Here's your hint, calculate the total charge and then work back from that. Here's the worked answer. I'll just turn my um, pointer on. So the total capacitance is one on 8 plus 1 on 12 and then all inverted back and that comes to 4.8. Check our answer is 4.8 less than 8. Yes it is being the smallest capacitor so we're going to be in the right mark. What is the TQ total? Is the capacitance total multiplied by the voltage total. So we have 1.5 millicoulomb in the first capacitor and in the second capacitor and in the third capacitor etc etc so the voltage across the first one is going to be the Q multiplied by the capacitance our 1.15 millicoulomb multiplied by sorry divided by our 8 giving us 144 volts our second one the same Q again but this time divided by the 12 microfarads, so 1.55 divided by 12, giving us 96 volts. And you can always check your answer, 144 plus 96 adds up to 240 volts. If you're a volt here or there, it doesn't matter, because it's probably rounding in your calculator. Question seven, the circuit below has a total capacitance of 6.8 microfarads. Determine the value of C3 and the total charge on the circuit. This one's a bit more challenging. So 
capacitors in series and you've got to find the missing capacitor. So pause here. So here's your hint. Transpose the inverse of the addition. So you, your uh, formula says 1 on TC equals 1 on C plus 1 on C2 plus 1 on C3, etc, etc. You're going to have to transpose that. So continuing now, here's the answer. So we know that uh, 1 on 6.8 is equal to 1 on 18 plus 1 on 56 plus 1 on C3. And I'm just leaving it all in microfarads. So I'm just going to leave it all in microfarads. So C3, or 1 on C3 in actual fact, it's got to be 1 on 6.8 minus 1 on 18 plus 1 on 56. And if you put that in your calculator, you'll come out with 13.6 microfarads. So that's the value of C3. What's the total charge? Well, once we know what the total capacitance is, and we were told that it's 6.8, and we know the voltage is 100 volts across the circuit, that comes in at 0 0.65 millicoulomb. So, question 8. Three capacitors are connected in parallel this time. 0.1 of a microfarad, 0.33 and 0.47 of a microfarad. They're connected across a 9 volt DC supply. Calculate the total capacitance, the voltage across each capacitor and the charge on each capacitor. So pause here while you have a go at that. Here's your hint. Total capacitance equals C1 plus C2 plus C3 etc. And here's our answer. So let's look at how we got there. C total wasn't that difficult. So we just added up the three capacitances and we get 0 0.9 microfarads. The three capacitors are connected in parallel. Therefore, the voltage, volts 1, cross volts 2, cross volts 3, volt 3, so the answer has to be 9 volts. And then we need to know the Q in each capacitor. It asks for the charge in each capacitor. Remember Q equals volts total times the capacitance. Well, we know we've got 9 volts across each capacitor, so that's reasonably straightforward. We know the capacitance value for each, and we simply multiply that by 9 and we end up with 9 microcoulomb, 2.67 microcoulomb, and 4.23 microcoulomb. Question 9. For the circuit below, determine the total capacitance, the supply voltage, and the circuit charge. So I've got three capacitors, 5 microfarads, 15 and 20. And they tell us we've got 12 volts across the 20 microfarads. So pause here. Here's your hint. C total equals C1 plus C2 plus C3, etc. So pause again. And now your answer. Again, it's just a matter of adding up the three values, 15, 5 and 20, giving us 40 microfarads total. Of course, we know volts total equals the voltage across V3, as well as the voltage across V2, as well as the voltage across V1. So if the voltage across v C3 was 12 volts, it has to be the supply voltage. 
and then the total charge is simply TQ is the capacitive total multiplied by the voltage total so 12 volts multiplied by 40 microfarads finally gives us 0 0.48 millicoulomb. So that ends lesson 10 exercise tutorial that gives you a little bit of application of the theory using a little bit of math modeling to solve problems around capacitive circuits.